Guys, welcome back to the course and in today's lesson, I know a lot of you are coaches. Some of you are purely in sales, but a lot of you actually coach or do something where you deal with people on a daily basis because a lot of you, so many deal with clients in more than a way of just selling. You actually have to deliver that coaching, be it in a group manner or a one-on-one -on -one manner or you're doing consulting for companies. So I wanted to take a moment and work you through some frameworks, some things that are on my mind before, during, and after my coaching calls that I think could add some more value and some structure and some more depth for your clients so you get even more value. Um, and that's, by the way, I'm adding more value to you in this program, but this is something you need to be thinking of for your clients as well. Not only after you get the sale, not only with the coaching, but what are things that you could do that are systematized that produce more massive value? Because when you have a reputation or an identity for yourself that you stepped into as a coach, as a leader, as an influencer, as somebody that provides more value through who you're being, through what you're saying, through what you're delivering in a scalable process. This, for example, this video I'll do once, but it'll be massively valuable to you so you can be more, even more valuable to your clients. So start thinking about, first things I want you to think of are what are things you can do to add even more value to your clients? Always be thinking that. And when you see other people in the marketplace always asking those two questions we've talked about over and over again, when you see other people in your space, I always ask these two questions I got from Tony that have really attributed to everything that he's done, and he'll tell you that. One is, what's great about this? Meaning, what can I utilize? What can I model? What can I, I take and learn and make my own? Tony asked that of NLP, of Jim, Jim Rohn, of John Grinder, of Richard Bandler, of all these other coaches and mentors that he's had. He says, what's great about that? What can I utilize? And then the second question is, how do I make it even better? You know, for myself, I've gone through a lot of sales coaching programs. I've had a lot of coaches, and I've even gone through coaching programs with the best in the world, and I've asked myself that question humbly, how could I deliver something better? How could I add more value? So this, this product that I'm giving you, this bonus, has come from me asking that question, how do I help you become more influential and deliver more impact for your clients if you're a coach, so you're getting more value here. So constantly be thinking about that. How can you model what I'm doing or somebody else is doing? And how can you make it even better? How you provide more value in the marketplace than anybody else? Next question, and this is very important. So a lot of you are coaches and people have hired you to be their coach. You came here to learn a process to sell, but I want you to get really clear for yourself why does somebody actually hire a coach? Why would you hire a coach? Think about that. Why would you hire a coach? Why does anybody hire a coach? Clarity is power. You know, yes, they get some accountability. Yes, they get some new insights. But you should be clear about what you're actually, what is going on? What are some of the things they might not even be aware of? What are the things they are aware of? Why they hire a coach? And what are the things that they're not aware of? The more clear you are about that, and you start to put that into your marketing and your messaging and your selling process, and then deliver that in your coaching, you won't have these coaching calls that are kind of like just catching up on their week, some accountability. You'll have real structure, targets to hit emotionally within them, and then targets for them to hit in their own life that allow them to become more powerful. And I tell you, the coaching process is a lot more fun when you have people that are actually doing stuff, stepping up, and you're, you guys are making this thing grow. There's an aliveness, there's a, a connection there, there's a depth, and there's, they really take these calls seriously because they come there, bring in their A game, and you have to be clear about that too. What's your A game? So I'm gonna finish with some of the things that, that I go on to, but first, we're gonna touch on what is it that people are looking for? So I wrote a few words up here. The first thing that people are looking for you know, they want to be focused and clear. Most people are not clear. You know, it's hard to hit a target that we can't see. So you're always getting people clear about what they want, who they want to be, what their future identity is, getting them really clear about what their outcome, get them really clear about what they actually want for their life, their business, their relationship, whatever it is you coach. Well, I coach on sales and I'm like, what do you want? People always say, I want more money. That's not specific. Here's a dollar, get out of here. You know, I want to close. 10 deals a month at $5,000 each. I want to build out a funnel. What was that look like? So we want to get clear. We want to see a vision. Without a vision, people perish. So we're always getting people their vision. And you'll have some kind of application process where you have people write down their goals. I tend to do that before the coaching starts. I get an application so I'm clear in those three months, two months, whatever. I'm clear about what targets, what do they need to be reminded of over and over and over again. And ideally, I would have them write their goals down every for every day or we're going to talk about those goals every single time. 
because one of the things people want also that we'll touch on is somebody to talk about these big dreams that they have and help them build a structure underneath. So you're always getting them clear because people, when they go, you know, they talk to you every 10 days, every two weeks, whatever, by the time they come back to you, their mind has been on a million different things. So getting them really, really clear. Clarity is power. So focused and clear is huge. That's number one. Second thing, you're going to talk about strategies. You know, strategies could be, uh, you know, different ways to, to eat or different scripting, um, different ways to handle objections. So there's strategies. Another thing we talk about is stories. One of the things that I, I've mentioned this before, for each one of my clients, that my one-on-one -on -one clients, what I do is I actually script out a story of who this person is at the highest level. So this person living a higher standard of life. So I want to create a mental construct in my mind. I love what uh, Matthew McConaughey said, by the way. He says that his hero is himself in 10 years and he'll never catch his hero. So we have to have someone to chase, a future identity to go into. So I create this future identity for my clients and what I'm doing is every time I hop on a call, I look at that story or I look at something about them, I see their goals, I, I see something, I do a bit of research to reassociate me to who this person is, what they're all about before the call and to really see that vision. And then, and we're gonna get into, I'll see when they're not in alignment with the vision I've created, we get clear about what that vision is and I hold them to that standard, but sometimes that takes rewriting the story because they've been living into a story about their past, about people, about life, about money, about their, their big bones, whatever. And so we wanna write, rewrite that story for them. And they might wanna do that for themselves. That's an exercise I have people do uh, towards the middle of my nine week, or my 12 week process, about week, about week seven. And so they write down the story for their life. They write down the rewrite the story of their life. And getting associated to that can be a huge breakthrough for your people. So we look at the stories. We look at the stories they, they tell them themselves that might be disempowering and we create more empowering stories. People that have overcome challenges, people that have stepped up in times of great difficulty. And then what we're also doing is always changing the state. You've heard me refer to that over and over again throughout this program. We're really getting people to change their emotional state. This is a Tony Robbins thing. A lot of this I get from Tony, kind of my own version of it. What's great about it? How can I make it better? Asking those same questions that you're asking all the time now. So story, strategy, state or strategy, stories, and states. So states, that's patterns of focus, getting them to ask themselves questions about their life that are empowering, not why does this always happen to me? Why am I so stupid? Why am I big boned? Why is there nobody out there for me? Why can't I make enough money? These are endless loop questions that go nowhere. So we wanna ask empowering questions. What can I do? What do I stand for? What am I focused on? What am I grateful for? What am I excited about? What am I passionate about? You know, what am I gonna storm through this week? You know, asking questions that are not past focused, you'll notice, but are present and future focused. And by the way, people often get this confused, especially with my, one of my favorite authors' work, Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle talking about being present. Here's the question though, where do successful people focus? The past, the present, or the future? Most of us would say the present. If we only focus on the present, and if your clients only focus on the present, they might have to get overwhelmed with all the stuff they have, to, they have to do. Oh my God, I have to do all this now. Or they might do things in the moment that feel good, like food or jerking off or you know, sex or whatever it is. You know, they do something to feel good because they're only focused on the present. Successful people have a strong association to the present, very strong association. They're here, but they are focused on the future. They are focused on the future. So remember that for yourself. Focus, have this vision, that vision to step into. Focused on the future, associated to the moment. And so the state, we wanna get people clear where they're associated to this is their life, but they're focused on how things can be. See things as they are, not worse than they are, and then make it the way that they see it. Have that vision. So we wanna get them into a state where they have strong patterns of focus in their life, patterns of meaning that are strong, and a strong physiology, because you're in a state you storm through. You know, that's what creates a breakthrough when you change all of this. So that's breakthrough coaching. So those are things you're doing constantly in your coaching program. And you know, this piece right here, I wrote down just alignment, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to touch on this again here, congruence, but they're very much the same, you know, congruency is power. And even when you talk to somebody, one of your coaching clients or yourself, you could ask somebody questions and you can feel their little butt sway or kind of, sort of, maybe what happens is, and the reason I put alignment, most people have beliefs that are in conflict. So realize this, every result, 
that we have in our lives. You meet everybody, every result that's in your life today, physically, emotionally, financially, the person you've become, these are all results. All results come from actions. Things that we do are things that we don't do. Different actions produce different results. So where do our actions come from? Actions come from decisions. Decisions. Decision-making ability is your power. That's the moment where we start to take the power back. That's the decide. That's that's the critical point. Decisions. Most successful people in the world, like President of the United States, what does he do all day? He makes decisions. Owner of a company makes decisions. Most people are so scared of making the wrong decision, they make no decision, and no decision is still a choice. It's a cho it's a choice to stay paralyzed. So we're working with people with these decisions they make, and every single moment of our lives, you're focused on. We have three unconscious decisions that we make that we need to take conscious control of, and our clients need to take conscious control of. One is what to focus on. You could focus on the past, you could focus on the future, you could focus here, you could focus on this video, you could focus on something that happened to you 20 years ago. You could focus on, oh, instead of being dealing with the things in your life that you don't like, you could focus on the future and say, oh, well, someday, someday, kinda, sorta, maybe. So we need to be able to focus in a way that's just, whether it's in the past or present or future, it doesn't matter, but focused in a way that makes us feel strong and empowered. So focus, is one of the decisions that we make about what to focus on because focus equals feeling as we touched on. So every moment in your life, you are focused on something and we can't focus on too many things at once, otherwise we go crazy and we have habitual patterns of focus. 99% of the things you thought about today, same thing as yesterday, it's a fact. So we have to take conscious control about, we have to decide about what we're gonna, we're gonna focus on to be present. And so whatever does cross your pattern of focus, you make it, you make it mean something. So you could focus on that deal that you lost. You can make it mean something bad about yourself or the world or sales or people. So you could choose, based on whatever you focus on, we could create a meaning. There's an empowering meaning or a disempowering meaning. Disempowering, empowering, whatever. And so you have this pattern of focus, you make it mean something, and then from there you take an action. So say somebody misses a sale, they make it mean something bad about themselves or the client, and, it, and then their action is they do nothing or they eat ice cream or to feel, to feel good, or they waste time. Or somebody else misses the same sale, they focus on it, they make it mean, hey, I gotta call that person back, or hey, for next time, here's what I learned, and here's what I'm gonna do next. Different action plan. Doesn't matter what's happened to you in your life, these decisions we're making all the time, and we have habitual patterns about around decisions, and decision-making ability is the key. Most successful people in the world make the most decision, and they don't always make the right decisions, but they always make the decision right because they're focused on their outcome. They're focused on what they want. So they might make a bad decision, but then they get some, some learning, you know, they get some feedback, and then from that experience, then they have better judgment and they're able to make better decisions, so they keep on failing forward fast, and that's the decision based on the vision that they're living into. And so we always have to clear, be clear about the result and who we want to be in this world. So taking the power back of the decisions, because right now you are a, a victim of your own decisions, good or bad. And if you want a better quality life, you need better quality decisions, which comes from often making bad decisions. So decisions are something you have to make a lot of, but most people are not consciously choosing what to focus on, what things mean, and what they're gonna do. They're just kind of going with the flow. So decision-making ability. So to recap, results come from actions. Actions come from decisions. So where do our decisions come from? They come from our thoughts. And all those 60,000 thoughts that go through your head every day, all of those thoughts come from your beliefs what you believe about people, what you believe about life, what you believe about money, what you believe about what you deserve. And your beliefs, your belief system, your BS, has come from your experiences. And we've all had experiences in our life that you know, have been positive, but we've also had some negative experiences that we made mean something consciously or unconsciously. So really getting clear about that for you and realizing that your clients have some disempowering beliefs and some of the beliefs they have are in conflict, and that's why we say alignment. So somebody might believe, hey, it'd be really great if I made lots of co coaching calls, but they also believe, that sucks, I feel like I shouldn't have to do that. So they have some beliefs in conflict, um, or you might have some beliefs in conflict. And so those are some of the things that we're working through in this program, is getting you really aligned, really aligned. And so alignment is power. So realize that. They have these beliefs like, he who hesitate is lost, uh, look before you leap. And so we often are fed different lines of information from different teachers and mentors that are in conflict. And it's not so much that one is right or wrong, 
but you have to find what's right for you. And you're going to make some bad decisions, but the more clear you are about that vision, the more clear and more powerful you be in your own communication with your clients. So touching on this really quick. So going back, this will be a bit of recap. This is just another framework. And by the way, I've said this over and again, over again throughout the program, you can have a framework or hard work. I have studied under so many teachers that I've used lots of different frameworks and I'm constantly, so there's some overlap, but I'm thinking once I notice something, I have some structure where I'm going on my calls, but I've got different, different tools are needed at different times, different frameworks. And so first one, always, you know, this is just another framework is getting clear. People come to like, why do people hire you as a coach? They want to get clear about who they want to be, about the next step of their life. They want to get clear about their outcome. Uh, and we're going to touch on that again here. Congruence, that relates to alignment. Most people, like they say one thing, but they do something else. And so as a coach, you're keeping people clear and focused, but you're keeping them congruent. Congruent, like some people might say they want to be in great shape, or they say they want to make lots of money, but then they're sleeping in or eating bad or doing something that's out of alignment. And as your coach, you got to call people on that. You know, it's like it's, it's somebody's like, don't do this all the time with like your family member or somebody that you care about because they'll hate, they, they won't like you holding them accountable around this congruence. But people are paying you. You get them clear about that vision. And when they say one thing and they act out of alignment, most people like say like their words are here, their thoughts are scattered, their actions are over here. Thought, you know, words are here, actions are here, thoughts are scattered and emotionally all over the place. So congruency is when your thoughts, your words, your actions, your feelings, your emotions, your beliefs, your identity, all in alignment. And when you see people in that alignment and that congruency, they say what they mean, they mean what they say, they are their word. Keeping people to their word, that is huge. And on your coaching calls, your word and their word has to mean something. Showing up on time, not skipping over things. When people say it, say, hey, what's going on here? Because they, they sometimes they'll have a values conflict. And so there's deeper you can go in there. But realize that people will act out of alignment sometimes. And as a coach, you get them back aligned. That's why they're paying you. So those are some of the uncomfortable conversations that you will need to have. Uh, congruence is really powerful. This relates to it as well. Challenge. And one of the great things I say sometimes is, not, not great, but good things that I say. I say, hey, can I challenge you on this? Or they say, you know what? I, I did this. And I said, how do you feel about it? They say, I feel good. I said, well, it's, I feel good. It doesn't sound like you did great. What would it have taken for you to do great? And I said, well, I could have done this. Well, I challenge you, next situation, to do, to do great and to be great and perform great. So I'm challenging them. And so sometimes we'll look at their performance and we'll challenge them to do or be or become or come more. It could just be a different level of intensity. It could be a different level of relaxing. It could be a different level of being present with somebody they care about. So it's challenging people to do and be more, to expand their capacity. So people are hiring you as a coach to challenge them, to push them a little farther than they thought they could go. You know, it's like being a personal trainer in the, the mental, emotional, spiritual gym. We challenge people, we challenge their thinking, we challenge them. Um, and one of the things that you've heard me say in these programs throughout, I'll say, uh, when I challenge people, I'll say something like, um, um, I invite you to consider the possibility. So that's the language pattern I use. Because they're focused here, and I say, well, here's what's possible. So I want them to focus on what's possible. So I say, hey, I invite you to consider this possibility. My experience has been, and then I'll speak from my experience, because my experience cannot be argued. So if you were coming to me with something that you did, um, and you say, hey, that's, that's how it is, and that was just, it was good enough. I'd say, well, I invite you to consider the possibility that you could have done this and this and this and this. My experience has been, for myself and some of my other clients, that when they did this and they pushed themselves more, they actually felt a lot better. Do you feel like you could have challenged yourself more and been a little more present, a little bit more hungry, a little bit more focused, a little bit more intense, a little bit more incongruent, a little bit more passionate, a little bit more loving, a little more sincere? So challenge people. So, and then lastly here in this row, we have connection. Sometimes people will you know, connect with you just because you're a cool guy or girl. They're, they saw some of your videos. They saw, you, um, they saw what you were up to, and they said, hey, I want to connect with this person. You know, and as I touch on my RPM statement, the things that really focus my mind before I get on a call, uh, it's going to relate to this. And I know that a lot of people want to connect with me just because they want, they want to have me in their pocket. They want to have me feeling like, like I got their back. And so that connection, we have that camaraderie, realize this because a lot of people don't have anybody in their life that they can talk to about these dreams. 
So you are a sounding board that feeds back and asks questions. Um, and, I, and I do want to make this, this clear that coaching is very different than therapy. Therapy tends to focus on the past and dealing with emotional things can be very heavy and sometimes that might come up, but it's getting people focused on the present and the future, really focused on the future because that's exciting to build something, not to try to repair the past, that's more therapy, but to take where we are and build on something with daily actions, daily focus, daily commitment, and daily challenge every single week, having a measured process, what gets measured gets improved, what gets measured with somebody looking at it and holds you accountable gets measured quick. And so that connection where they can talk to you about this is huge, so that's also why people hire you. This process that, that I've adopted here from Tony, um, something he calls RPM, a results focused. So again, going back to that concept of getting people focused on results. Like what do you actually want? What's your outcome? What's your outcome? I ask that question to myself every single day. What do I really want here? Like in an argument, do I want to be right? Or do I want to feel heard and I want to make sure this person feels heard? And do I want to meet, make a truce? If I'm, if I'm clear in an argument that I want to have a connection with this person I love and make a truce and, and have some, it's like some resolution as opposed to, I want to be right. My outcome isn't to be right, it's, a, it's to connect with this person I care about and to make sure that you know, we, we can see eye to eye. That changes my tonality, it changes how I stay, show up. So getting your clients really clear about the results they want in their life, what's the outcome? And asking that question of them many, many times over again. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I want more money. Well, why do you want that? Why is that important to you? Because when we're really clear about what we want, and by the way, money's not enough. It's got to be, I want to serve a certain amount of people, or I want to build a company, I want to do something. So we have to have these results. Because even a financial goal says you want to make a million dollars, well, that requires creating this product or this course. And so we want to think about the results and why we want those. And that's the next piece is the purpose. Why? Why, why does somebody want that? Why do you want to be a coach? Is it just for money? You know, why is this person on the phone call with you? What's their why? Why are you going to hold them to a higher standard and why are they going to follow through? So they need to be clear about what's, what's in it for them emotionally. Like, why are they doing this? Uh, what needs are they going to fulfill? And then I put here, so instead of for me being RPM, results, purpose, uh, massive action plan, I put, for what I, I kind of cycle through this, and it's kind of the my condensed version of all of this that we've talked about. Result, getting people really clear, clear and focused. Clarity is power. Uh, why do they want it? Because that gets the emotions involved. Because if we don't like, you know, if we just go through the, the, the day going after the goal, yeah, the goal can be kind of juicy, but why do I want that? What could I do? What money could I give away? Could, could I buy my mom a house? You know, what kind of car do I want to drive? And why do I want that car? I want to feel sexy or wind blowing through my hair, you know, just having fun listening to a big engine. I don't know what it is, but to feel these emotions, emotions bring fuel and it's got to be heaven if we do and hell if we don't. So we're always going back to the purpose, the why. And then I put here strategies, talking about different strategies. Um, as my coaching has developed over the years, I've become a bit more of a consultant where coaching is more of a collaborative process, like a Socratic method, if you will, asking lots of questions, getting some feedback, feeding back those questions, a lot of questions. But now at this point in my career, I feel like I've been around so many people um, and they come to me for a specific reason. So sometimes it's more consultative and I'm telling them exactly what to do, not asking them just what they want, but then I offer prescriptions and solutions via strategies, strategies, like this is how you get that result. This is what you do with your tonality. This is what you do with your scripting. This is what you do with your body. This is what you do in order to make yourself more successful. So strategies, and then I, one of the main things here, and you've seen me talk about this a lot in the first module, habits, mastering our habits. Be, do, have, in order for you to have the things that you want, what do you have to do? In order to do those things, what do you have, who do you have to be? And so who you're being, your values, your identity, very, very important, the most important thing, and goal setting, what you want to have, very, very important, but oftentimes gets overlooked is the, the doing, the habits. So every day is looking at the habits. In order for you to make that income you want, in order for you to have that body that you want, that relationship you want, what are the things that you have to do every single day, every day? You know, dialing in these habits, that's why it's called a habit, you know, five times a week, seven times a week, I've committed to a new morning routine that I do every day. Is it meditation? What are the specific habits that you need to have on a checklist every single day? Check it off or rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How well are you fulfilling this habit? Checklists are awesome. So dialing in somebody's habits, always looking at that. What are they doing consistently? You know, consistency is, is power as well. And then right here, 
Um, basically, instead of massive action plan, I put actions and commitments. And so before the next coaching call, when I talk to this person, I will prescribe some specific actions they need to take based on what we talked about, and they'll make some commitments, and they'll write those down. And so that's how we move people forward. So I know that's a lot. It's a lot of different frameworks. Um, and I'll be touching on more of this type of stuff because in this program, I'm basically coaching you through these videos and on calls. And if you have questions about this stuff, let me know. Um, but I have said that I would show you, and I want to get it word for word. This is things that I've adopted over time, but I RPM'd my coaching calls. So you, as I said in the beginning of this, could hop on your coaching calls to get in the session to... Um, to call somebody back. So if you call somebody back just to call them back, like, hey, I'm calling them back. I'm calling to do their session. There's a certain emotional intensity for you. And instead I wrote this down, like, why, why am I calling this person back though? Here's why I call them back. Um, it's not to get back to them. My outcome is to make them feel that I am so in their corner that I'm here to make sure that their needs to met, be met at the highest level and, and then I'm completely serving them at the highest level where they feel so certain about this connection, they feel strong from this energy I give them to go out there and do and be and have more in their life, like they deserve it. Um, I put more, and I, I would do this more than any, my, like my why, like I do this more than anybody else on the planet, more than any other coach they've ever talked to, um, and I let them know that they can count on me. And why do I do this? It's because it's who I am. Because when people deal with me, they're dealing with someone who cares and who will care like no other human being has ever they've ever dealt with before. I deliver at such a level because I'm a force for good and they can count on me that they're gonna get something right here in this conversation that they can never get in anywhere else on earth. I have more tools, more strategy, more caring, more sincerity. You know, it's more there than they can get anywhere else and so that's why they're gonna to come to me. And so what this does, this meets my needs. And we've touched throughout this program, meeting your needs or having your needs met by yourself or your actions, very, very important, important if you wanna live a fulfilled life, sustain a high level of performance at the peak. So it meets my needs uh, to be significant. You know, I feel like I'm one of the best in the world at this. Like in this conversation, I feel like they're there for a reason. So significance, check. Uh, a sense of connection. Uh, so one of my needs is, you know, why, why am I on the call? to connect with this human who strongly desires to better themselves and is willing to invest money in themselves just like me. So I admire this person. They're doing the same stuff I do. They're investing money. I've invested money in coaching that I didn't have. And these people are willing to do the same thing. Like, booyah, I'm meeting a friend. It's awesome. Uh, a need for uncertainty. My clients are playing big games in the world. And so I get to hear about the adventures they have in their life and I get to challenge them to be and do and have more. So that juices me. It means some uncertainty. I don't know what challenges they're going to have. So I don't know what's going on in their life. So I get some, some variety there as well. Uh, next, I put a sense of, I think I, oh, I put a sense of certainty because I feel certain that I can help them. My certainty takes away their doubt and it feels damn good. That's something that's one of my mantras. My certainty is so strong, it overcomes your doubt because I'm just so conditioned and I'm so sincere and I'm so hungry. I'm so determined. My certainty is so strong, it overcomes their doubt. Uh, lastly, I put here, last two nudes, growth. I'm getting better all the time. They're getting better all the time. We're getting better together. It feels fantastic. So growth, check. Uh, contribution, I know I can help this person. Uh, fireworks and breakthroughs don't have to happen on every call. Me just being there with my presence and intent is enough. Then I put, all my skills are just a bonus. So I'm already enough, I'm already contributing to this person. I don't have to be Tony Robbins, I don't have to be this guru, I don't have to be the best fitness person or relationship coach, I don't have to be everything to all people, I just have to be the best version of me. And I contribute and it feels amazing. So I hope you've gotten some insight here to drive the, drive the needle for your clients a little more, adding more value, being of more value, being of more service, having more impact, intensity, and intent in your calls. That juice will, it, it is what will change the world. Realize this, and you've heard me say this before, life supports that what supports life. If you do something for yourself, feel some self-empowerment, but if you do something for your family or your community or humanity, life supports that what supports life. And there's a different level of tent. When I'm speaking to you, even when I'm selling people, if, I'm, if they feel like I'm selling them just so I can get a sale, it's very different if they feel like I'm selling them so that they will do something to empower their life more, to be better parents, better teachers, better coaches, you know, and then that could change that person's life and they become better people in the world. So 
in my conversation with you, this person I'm talking to, I'm trying to change the world because you can change the world starting with one conversation. And we all have that power if we have the right tools and the right intent and the right energy and focus and commitment. And so I'm hoping that there's enough in me and some strategies that you've gotten here that could help you help people, help people, help people, help people, help people, and that's it. And so we're all doing our part here. So that's what I see. And I think that intent has connected with people at a higher level, helped me get better results for them, and help them become better people for themselves. So hopefully you got something out of this, and I will see you in the next video.